All right, let's review what we went over in class on Thursday. Um, we talked about how to create an accordion effect with JavaScript, and then we also talked about doing custom objects. So let's get started on the accordion first. Um, you can see we've got our code already in place. We've got a div of with an ID of accordion that wraps around three content areas and three titles. You see each one's got an H2 followed by some content or a div with some content here. Another H2 and then some more content. We've got three tabs. So what we want to happen is when we is that these start out collapsed and when we click on a title it's going to show or hide the content below it. So it can start off with a little CSS and actually hide everything. And we can say tab one, tab two, we're just saying for those three IDs, we're going to give a value of display none. So that hides them over here just like we expect. <coughs> and then let's create some JavaScript that when we click on tab one, it's going to display the div right below it. Okay, so the first thing we can do is set up our initial variables. And so we're going to reference the um, div with an ID of accordion. And we're going to do that by saying document.get element by ID of accordion. Then we want to um, assign a listener to all of the H2 tags within that. So the next thing we need to do is actually grab all of those H2s. So let's create an array. Um, we're going to say within the accordion <coughs> variable since that's selected the accordion node. So then we can come in and say get elements by tag name is H2. And by doing, instead of doing document, we actually did accordion here. And that just means we're only getting the, the H2s that are inside the div that has the accordion ID on it. Okay, so we've done that. And next we need to add an event listener. But we can't, in basic JavaScript, we can't add an event listener to a group of tags. We have to add one individually to each and every tag. And so for us to do this, we've got our list in the titles variable, we've got a list of all the different um, H2s. So we're going to need to loop through that and assign an add event listener to each one of those. So we just say um, start off with i being 0. Then we're going to say as long as i is less than titles.length, which is going to be the number of H2s that we've got. And then we're going to say each time the script runs, or the loop runs, we're going to increase i by 1. Okay. <clears throat> so inside of this loop, we can come in and say titles and use i to reference which one we're talking about in the array, and then add an event listener to that one. Alright, so we want, whenever we click on it, so we say it's a click event, and then we assign a function. Now we did an anonymous function before where we could actually just run the code right away. But this time we're going to show just a little bit different way you can do it, which is just pass in the name of the function that you want to use. So we'll say display accordion. And that's our the function that we want to use. Okay? So then all we have to do is actually create that function. Display accordion. Alright, so anytime we click on one of these tabs, whatever we've got specified inside this function is what's gonna run. Okay? So we want it whenever we click on tab one, whenever we click on this over here, we want the next div to show. And there's a couple of different ways we could do that, but um, the way we're going to do it now is let's just assign a variable, and we're going to say this, which is referring to um, the item that we've selected, um, our node, and we're going to say this dot next sibling. Okay, so that's going to grab the next node 
and we, we've got that selected and we'll be able to do something with it. But we actually have to do it a little bit differently because even though it's not obvious, what some browsers do is assume that, um, I mean, you've got an H2 node here and you would think that the next node would be the div, but there's actually an empty text node in between and Chrome and Firefox put that in there in between. So we actually have to say, don't just get the next sibling, but get the sibling after that. So we're just going to use next sibling twice. Okay. <clears throat> if you're confused on next sibling, remember that we talked about the node having parents and child and children in it. And so div ID accordion would be the parent of H2. And this, you know, P tag would be a child of this div. Well, since these two H2 and the div are in the same, have the same parent, they're considered siblings. Okay, so when we say next sibling, we're just saying get the one right after it. And since there's an empty text node, we're using it twice to actually grab the div that we're looking for. Okay. Now we want it when we click on it to show it if it's hidden and hide it if it's visible. So we can kind of toggle that back and forth. And so we're going to use an if statement. And we're going to say if content. We're going to access one of the properties of this um, object node. And we're going to say let's access the style property and the display property of that style property. And we're going to say that if it does not equal block, then we need to do something. Let's hide this here so it doesn't wrap as much. So if that value does not equal block, then we want to execute some stuff. Else we want to execute something else. Okay, so in this case, now we retrieve the value of it by saying content.style.display. <clears throat> but we can also set it. So we can say content.style.display equals block. So we're saying if it doesn't equal block already, then it needs to now. And if it does, that's where the else statement comes in, then we want to change the value of that property to none. I actually spelled that wrong. Alright, so within here, hopefully this is going to work for us. Let's give it a run and see. So if I click on this, it shows it. If I click it again, it hides. And it's going to do that for all three of these. Because our loop has essentially set an, an event listener for each one of those H2 tags. Alright, so that's fairly straightforward. All right, let's look at uh, custom objects now. We mentioned that in JavaScript, um, everything is pretty much an object, which means that everything has properties and methods. And we've talked about some of the predefined ones in JavaScript, which is a string or a number or an array. Um, we've talked about a lot of different ones that have predefined properties. You know, it has a, a string and an array can have properties um, like length or something like that. Um, we talked about the document object model and all the nodes being objects that have properties like style and um, we just used one you know, second ago, style.display. And so everything has these predefined properties. But we can also create a custom object. And creating a custom object is as simple as saying, is using the curly brackets. Okay? And anything inside that, this is kind of like JavaScript's way of saying, okay, we've got a custom object here that we can add our own properties and our own methods to. Okay, so the way we do that is we can come in and we can assign a property by saying color colon red. Okay, and we could come in and assign another one that is a height of 20. And we're using a comma to separate out each one of these. We could say the speed. We we'll use the example in class of a uh, um, a car being an object, and we could assign information about that car, whether you know the color of the car, the height of the car, things like that. So we're just kind of <coughs> naming a similar object and kind of showing that to be possible. All right, so we could have moving 
is true. You notice that the values are um, strings, numbers, booleans, all that stuff is very possible. And so now, let's just uh, use that. Now, if we want to test it, we can say my car dot speed, for instance. And if we log that to the console, then we're going to see that it actually returns that value. And let's say we wanted to test another one. We could say my car dot color, and that's how we access the properties, which is just how we've been doing it all along. Um, but in this case, now we have our own custom one. <clears throat> we mentioned that uh, objects have properties and methods, methods being actions that occur that are specific to that object. And so let's say that we wanted to add a um, custom method called speed up. Okay, we've got an example of a car, so we're going to do that. So we could take this, and so when we assign a function, now that becomes a method, even though it looks very similar to properties, it's a, considered a method. And this is how JavaScript understands um, properties and methods on these objects. All right. So we could reference um, an ob uh, one of the properties within that object by using the this keyword, which we've seen before. That's just saying anything that happens within that object, we could refer to as this. So I could say this.speed equals this dot speed plus 50. All right. So in this case, if I ran, all this is doing is changing the speed property and of course increasing it by 50. So if I was to run my car dot speed up and then I was to log the current value of speed, then it's going to say 150 because it's actually changed the value of that property and increased it by 50. So anytime we use speed from then on with this particular object, it becomes 150. Okay. <clears throat> now what if we wanted to change this uh, dynamically? What if we wanted to not have a fixed value here? Um, we could come in and pass a variable here and we could call that uh, speed1. Then we can come in and add that in there so it becomes dynamic. So now I could, within this function, I could say, let's make it 20. So if I run this, it's going to show 120. If I was to call the speed up method twice and say a different value the second time, by the time it runs the, to the console, it's going to have added increase that by both of those. Okay, We can also change values by just stating them specifically. Um, so I could come in here and say it's 50. Now if I run it, since this happened after we ran this method, then we actually reset the value of that property. And so now it is 50. And so this is the basic idea of what we're trying to do. We're just trying to say, okay, we've got a custom object that has custom properties. We can also, one other thing to note, <coughs> is that we can add, um, after it's been defined here, we can add additional properties as we go just by defining them. So I could say width equals 20, and now it becomes another property on equal value or on equal level with all of those. So if we were to output the entire object to the console, we would see my speed has been reset to 50. And I have an additional width property down here and they're saved. Okay. So that's going to be it for today. And we're going to look um, soon at the different ways that we can go about uh, using objects to make our life simpler with a JavaScript library.